We'll keep it simple for today's practice. Have a block and a blanket or a throw pillow. A blanket's gonna be a little better than a throw pillow for today's practice. And we are going to start in seated. So I recommend sitting on something. It could be the block. It could be the blanket. I'm gonna sit on the blanket and give yourself that little bit of a boost. Make sure that you can be comfortable in cross-legged. And that might mean that you kind of have a block underneath each thigh or something like that, each knee. So do what you need to do to get comfortable in cross-legged because we're gonna take um, one hand and just lean in with the fist and start to massage the inner aspect of the calf. The secret to this is to lock out your elbow and work your knuckles in the direction of your knee, just centimeter by centimeter. And then work your knuckles in the other direction. You can go all the way into the arch of the foot if this feels good. So I'm just pouring my weight through the fist that I have into the arch of the foot. Let me switch the leg that's in front so you can see. There we go. And you can go more slowly than me. When you lock out your elbow the way that I have, it allows for there to be almost no muscular effort. I'm literally just leaning in, like I'm trying to lean across the table to tell someone something. And we'll slowly switch sides. I've got my green on today, as you can see, for happy St. Patty's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day. Elbows locked out. Pour the weight into that calf, into the muscle, the medial musculature of the calf. There's something that I have learned in some of my manual therapy um, continuing education where we're kind of almost, um, in our imaginations anyway, pulling the muscle off the bone. It's not actually happening, but you can almost feel like you're separating it from the shin bone a little bit. And then don't forget to get into the arch of this foot. Driving that knuckle down. Giving yourself a little tender loving care for the start of our practice today. And as you are ready, slide your hands down the thighs, almost like you're brushing off anything that happened before this moment, anything that does not need to clutter your mind, your body, your spirit for the next hour. And do the same with your shoulders. And give them a couple of rolls and let's close our eyes for a, a moment of centering. Back of the neck long. Dropping into an awareness of the right sitting bone and the left. Allowing the weight to be even between the two. Breath to be free. Notice if there's anything you can soften, maybe by leaning a touch back or a touch forward.
Just noticing where your breath goes naturally, inviting it to spread evenly through the abdomen, the ribs, the upper chest. Some of us might feel moved with our next exhale to let out a big sigh. And wherever you are with your next inhale, we bring our hands to our heart center, reminding ourselves that this practice is not for show, not for aesthetics, not for um, achieving some sort of perfection in any component of our body or alignment, etc. We are here for nourishing mind, body, spirit, and for creating a spaciousness between thought and reaction to that thought. That is our yoga. If you've got the block or the blanket underneath of you, please slide them out of the way. Eyes are open now. And set your feet in front of you, hands behind you. Feet are hip distance apart. I like to go ahead and lift all 10 toes and spread them wide, fanning them out to the best of my ability here. And then it's really essential um, for good ankle and foot mobility to get the base of the big toe to stay close to the ground. So you're gonna swivel your knees a little bit right and left, but try to keep the base of the big toe rooted to the ground. What that should do is it should allow the arch to get really big on the side, your median arch, the big, the foot arch, to get really big as your knee drops out and to shrink a little bit as your knee drops in across your body. And then we're gonna do a round of this where we're not so worried about keeping the toes down or the base of the toes down. So just purely looking at the hips now, drop the hips all the way to the right like you're yawning, stretch it out. And then all the way to the left, pendiculate, that's a fancy word for yawn, <laughs> and wiggle side to side. It's so funny how just saying the word yawn makes me want to yawn. <laughs> and then you're going to wiggle your feet out in front of you and just lift your toes up off the floor. Lift the front of your foot up off the floor five or ten times, connecting to breath. Become aware of any difference between the right side and the left side. There might not be a difference, but if there is one, this is a good time to notice it and just to take note of that. Um, let's go ahead and wiggle the feet a little bit more forward. Lower yourself down vertebra by vertebra or use your elbows to make your way onto your back. No block, no blanket needed. Make sure your knees are at about a 90 degree angle and feet can be as wide apart as feels good. Flatten your back and go ahead and rise up. So now you should feel the front of your shins. That's your anterior tibialis really working hard. You should feel your glutes working pretty hard here because this is a low bridge. And you should be feeling hopefully a little bit of tractioning of your spine. If you dig your heels in, you could even rock yourself a little forward and back and then lower yourself down as if your spine could get longer as you lower. Other direction, flatten the back, rise up, find that low bridge, feel the burn, appreciate the burn at the front of your shins and then lower down all the way. I'm wiggling so that you guys can see me a little bit better. Heels dig in, toes stay up, forefoot stays up, front of the foot stays up. Articulating through your spine, one more round of this bridge. This time we're gonna stay up and we're gonna reach left hand across over to the right. Stay up and reach right hand across over to the left. Notice how your hips and your legs accommodate for this. One more time each direction and then lower yourself down all the way down. 
Bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees open out like a butterfly or a diamond. And now you're going to squish the base of your toe, just like the base of your um, first finger, base of your big toe, roots together to right to left. And then press down. So this takes a little bit of ankle stability to lift up into what I call a butterfly bridge. Knees are open. Rise up and lower down. See if you can get all 10 toes to press into one another. And maybe it's helpful to do this with your hands to get all your fingertips to touch because our hands and toes love to do the same thing at the same time. You might notice this as you spread your toes that your hands want to spread. Last little butterfly bridge, hold it up, really press your toes together, press the base of your toes together, reach the arms overhead for a little shoulder mobility. And then lean a little bit to the right, lean a bit, a little bit to the left, come back through to center, and slowly lower all the way back down. Draw your knees towards your chest, separate them a little bit like you're, you're starting to do happy baby pose. Knees are moving towards the armpits, but um, don't go into the full happy baby. You're just rocking a little bit side to side. And then draw your legs back towards one another. Roll to your side. It doesn't matter which side you start on. You can have your block under your head like I'm going to do if that would feel good to you. And you're going to put your top foot on the ground. So first, lift and lower the heel. So it's like you're coming into a stiletto shape with a foot. Heel raises super duper high and sinks down. And then lower the heel and keep it lowered. And then just lift just your toes. So the five toes lift up off the floor repeatedly. And then lower them down too. And now you're actually going to look at that foot as best as you can. Keep the base of the big toe glued to the floor. And just wave your knee a little bit side to side. Bend the knee of your bottom leg. So if you've got your right leg on top, if you're mirroring me, your bottom knee is going to be your left leg. That one's going to bend. And then we're going to push into the top leg, rise up onto the forearm of the bottom arm, and push down, lift your hips. So you're getting outer hips, both sides in a slightly different way. And then you're also getting the arch of your lifted, of your front leg, front foot. So really feel that lift. Maybe lift your toes as well. Drive the shoulder down. Sweep the other arm to the ear. And then go ahead and lower down. And then lower, straightening both legs. Come onto your belly. Bend your knees. And swish your feet side to side. We've got a lot of ground to cover today. And the reason we're getting to the hips quite a bit in the beginning is because of how closely they relate to the feet. From here, inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, lengthen. Inhale, rise up to table pose, tuck through toes. And you can look between your toes, spread your toes nice and wide, start to rock a little bit back and forth. As you bring your weight back towards your heels, most of us, if you've worn shoes lately, you will probably feel a little bit of tightness across the underside of your toes. Rock back as far as you can tolerate and then open one knee without removing the toes from the floor and open the other. Open your first and lower and open the other. So we're getting to spread the toes as the knee opens. This is so good for the feet. And it could even potentially 
I would say for sure, pre- help us prevent some bunions and possibly help to reverse them. They're a little bit tricky to reverse when they get to be a certain point. Last one, go ahead and lower down and switch sides. Make sure you have your block whatever direction you're facing. So we're gonna lie on our side, opposite side from where we just were. Take that top leg, if you're mirroring me, that is your left foot on top. And just start by rising onto your stiletto heel. See if you can do this smoothly. You may notice that the last few degrees feel quite foreign to your body and um, and therefore have a bit of a jerky movement quality to them. But see if you can smooth it out a little bit. And if you get fatigued, good. That's a good thing if you start to feel that muscle fatigue. Keep the base of the toes down. Keep the whole sole of the foot down now. And just lift your head. Your, five toes, I almost said 10 toes, <laughs> and repeat it again and again. You can almost, I hate to bore everybody, but you can almost not do too much footwork in this day and age. If you're somebody who enjoys walking, running, if you have any knee or hip issues or even low back issues, addressing your feet can be of massive benefit. And so I really am sending this this class, this practice out as a bit of a love letter to all of those body parts. You're going to keep the foot rooted to the ground, bend your bottom knee, take your top hand, put it down to the floor, Rise up onto the forearm of the bottom arm and then just push and lift. So you've got outer hip, outer hip. Try to keep the arch lifted. Hold it. Top arm reaches towards the sky. Lift your hips just a smidge higher. Excellent, you guys. And go ahead and lower down. Come all the way onto your belly. Again, no need for your block just now. And we're going to just take one foot. Keep the pelvis as neutral as you can with the floor. And tick-tock the leg in and out. This will rotate the hip in the socket, which is intimately related to um, control of the arch of the foot and vice versa. Straighten that leg, bend your opposite leg, and again, tick tock the foot side to side. 90 some percent of us are going to start to wiggle our pelvis. So put your hand on your low back across your sacrum at the back of your pelvis so you can feel if that is something that you're doing and just don't, don't let it happen. Soft expression on the face, bend both knees, press your heels together, press your pelvis down, float the chest, reach the arms by your side, just the tiniest little activation of your low back muscles, tiniest little back bend, don't go any deeper. Root your hands, curl your toes under, rise up into table pose again. Rock back and forth. As you start to pour weight into the legs with the toes curled under, again, spread the toes. Find a part, a location that feels good to you, meaning like you might be way back here and lifting your knee, or you might be way forward and lifting your knee. And of course, feel free to cushion your knees with the blanket that we have explicitly for this purpose. Lift one knee to the side and then the other. Glue the toes into the floor so they get a nice spread here. And then spin and down, spin and down. From table, please pivot on your right knee. That right foot's going to go out to the side. Spine is still neutral. Nothing else has changed. You might have to adjust your right hand. And then you're going to take your spare leg, your left leg, and spin it around and sink that sole of that foot down to the ground. So left leg roots down. Right knee is also supporting you. Left arm reaches to the sky. Draw your ribs in. Connect. Spread your toes. Deep breath. Arm by the ear, 
hand comes right back down, root it down. We're going to take it to the other side. Pivot on your left knee. Sweep your right leg out. Sink that right heel down to the floor. Wiggle the left hand wherever it needs to be to support you. And then top arm to the sky. What we're focusing on here is certainly your hips and your shoulder and your obliques all have to engage a little bit, but we're really paying attention to that back foot, trying to get the back foot to the floor, arch lifted. Top arm by the ear, both arms down, back leg stays straight, toes are curled under, and then add a second leg to it. So glutes active around your upper back. Awesome. Walk the hips high and slow motion, walk your hands to the back of the mat. Shake your head, left, right. Sweep your hips to the right and to the left. And as you do this, you might glance at your feet, appreciate how they accommodate all the movements, and then go ahead and rise all the way up to stand. I like to do this vertebra by vertebra, but do what you need to do for your back to keep it um, neutral and happy. From Tadasana at the back of the mat, inhale, arms up, ribs stay in, rise onto your tiptoes. Exhale, sink to your heels and try to lift your toes off the floor. If you need a little bit more support, like balance assistance with this, you can of course use the wall. We're gonna go back and forth to the tiptoes, all the way back to the heels, toes up to the tiptoes, all the way back to the heels, toes up. Arms to the side, by the way, helps a ton as well with your balance. And one more time, rise, arms by the ears is gonna be the most challenging. Toes up, bend your knees, and slowly slosh your body down, shake it out. We'll walk ourselves right back out, downward facing dog. And then this time, bring your toes to touch, cross that right foot all the way over to the left side of the mat, left foot all the way over to the right side of the mat, right foot all the way over to the left, left foot all the way over to the right, and just keep going back and forth not really back and forth, tingo dancing, to the front of the yoga mat. Once you make your way more closer to your hands, bend at your knees at the front of the mat. If you want to, you can grab your block, place it between your thighs here. Fingertips to the ground, rise onto your tiptoes, lower down. Spread your toes. If you have to do it with your hands, do it. I want you to see a little bit of air <laughs> between each of your toes. And it's okay if your pinky toes don't like to cooperate. See a little bit of mat between each of your toes and rise up onto your tiptoes and sink right back down onto your heels. Squeeze the block and then rise up, sink down, and then hands to your knees if you need a little support. Rise into uh, your first chair of the day. Palms together over the heart, back of the neck long. Shift onto your tiptoes, sink onto your heels. For this one, we're not needing to lift the toes off the floor, but you can if you want to try that. Please be safe, okay? Two more, rise to your tiptoes, go as high as you can. Get that stiletto on your Cinderella foot. And last one, rise to your tiptoes as high as you can. Oh my goodness, <laughs> and sink down and then rise up. Block between your legs is fine here. So I'll turn towards you so you can see, just shift to one side and then to the other. Find neutral, lift and spread your toes. You might also notice that your fingers like to spread and then shift to one side and shift to the other, maintaining that toe spread as best as you can. And then go ahead and do some circles here. Like your hips. All the way in one direction, all the way in the other. 
coming back through to center, set the block off to the side within arm's reach, and then inhale, arms up. So engage through the legs. Imagine the block was still there, so you're still kind of squeezing into that center line. And then exhale, hands over the heart, roll it down. Please step your right foot to the back of the mat. Toes are curled under. Lower your back knee down to the ground. Rise up into a half kneeling shape. Wiggle your front foot. As your arms go out to the side to help you with balance, wiggle your front foot in line with your back knee and your back foot so that you're, you're basically on this imaginary balance beam. You can use the edge of your yoga mat to help you to find that so that you're not quote unquote cheating, right? Um, nobody's doing that on purpose, I know. But tailbone is going to feel kind of heavy here. Front hip points, to put it another way, are going to be lifting up and engaging. You might feel a bit of a stretch on the front of your thigh. And if you need to, wiggle your front foot a little further out to the side. So it's right foot back. Left foot can be a little to the left if you absolutely need it. With the foot as close as you can get it to that straight line balance beam, rise onto the tiptoes front foot. Lower down. Wiggle the foot all the way to the front left corner of your yoga mat. Grab your block. Block is going to go under the right hand. Left hand, base of the big toe is going to be glued to the floor. Assist with that gluing by touching the left um, hand to that spot and holding it down. Knee is now going to open to the side. So let me show you what that looks like from the front. Toe is glued down and the knee is just kind of opening out to the side. My hand is helping that big toe stay down. This is good for the hips. This is good for the feet. This is good for the arch. And you don't have to sink into it too deeply. You don't have to go into a deep lizard shape here. Back toes are curled under, right? Float that back knee up. Pull through the heart, pull through the crown of the head, and then root down through the block. Rise your left arm to the sky. All hands down and step it back to your version of the vinyasa should you choose to take it. So I'm going to offer a modified version. Most of you probably know what the vinyasa is, the middle of the sun salute. Lower down from the knees onto the belly as a unit. That's the half chaturanga. Float your chest, activating the upper back. This is an active locus pose. My arms really aren't doing the work here. That's the big difference with cobra and up dog. And then connect your core wherever you are, knees down or up before you shift back to down dog. Down dog is a funny shape for the feet. And I'm gonna tell you why, so feel free to come out of it so that you can see this. That back foot in down dog is basically, they're both back feet in down dog. The ankle is dorsiflexed to 45 degrees. You can see what my back ankle is doing right now. And that is about a 45 degree angle from the floor with my shin bone. So this is above what would be considered normal average range of motion. Maybe that gives you a little bit of relief, maybe not, but the point is not to measure whether you're average or not, but to show that that's a lot of range of motion. And very many of us, we're gonna accommodate by going kind of around whatever might be stiff. So if your Achilles is a little bit stiff, you'll often sag your shin kind of medially and you'll lose the height of the arches of the feet. So I would rather you have your heels a little bit off the floor and feel the arches of the feet lifting in down dog and feel a little bit of a stretch on your Achilles. You're welcome, especially if your feet are really, heels are really high off the floor and it feels like too much on your upper body. You're welcome to put your hands on the seat of a chair or to put a blanket under your heels here. So come back into your down dog if you took a break like I did and give yourself the support you need. Let your shins kind of roll out away from one another. 
but not so far that you've lost contact with the base of the big toe. Okay, bend and straighten your knees a few times here. See if you can track your knees right over your middle toes. This should help you to have a good shin placement, as strange as that sounds. And then go ahead and walk your feet to the front of the mat again. If you liked the tango dance thing, this is also really nice for the muscles of the legs in general. From the front of the mat, inhale, rise halfway. From this halfway point, Ardha Uttanasana, lean into your tiptoes, try to come onto your um, tiptoes, heel lift. Lean into your heels, lift just your toes so that there's more weight in the heels. And then if you wanna surf a little bit, <laughs> don't look at me, front foot comes up off the floor. Maybe it's one foot, maybe it's both feet. Front and back. Try to keep your chin relatively close to the neck as you do this. And then have your block within arm's reach. Block's gonna go under your left hand as your left leg steps to the back of the mat. Right hand is going to be on your big toe, base of the big toe. Hold it down. Right knee opens to the side. See if you can keep the base of the big toe down, just using the muscles that cross your ankles and your foot. And if it doesn't stay down on its own, no shame in continuing to hold it. Come on out of the depth of this. Back toes are curled under, back knee straightens. We're spinning our chest towards the sky. Right arm to the sky, left arm rooting down to the block, and then vinyasa of your choice. Or, of course, skip straight to child's pose, ideally with your toes curled under, or to downward facing dog. And then in down dog, you want that equivalent of the arches lifting without completely distorting the weight onto the pinky toe side. So really try to get the base of the big toe down. This time we're gonna walk our hands all the way back to the feet. And then bend your knees as much as you need to to capture your big toes with your first two fingers and your thumbs. This is pretty classical, like Ashtanga-based movement where you might straighten your legs, but instead of straightening our legs here, we're just gonna pull the toes very gently toward one another, apart from each other, as we sway a little side to side. As you sway to the left, your right knee might get a little bit straighter, but that's not the main thing that we're after here. Come back to center and then root your hands onto your thighs. Lean forward and root your weight back into your heels. Lift all 10 toes up off the floor. Spread them wide, lower them down. Rise onto your tiptoes now that you've got this resistance through your knees. Notice if that's harder. And of course, as always, feel free to use one hand at the wall add anything that will help support you so that you don't fall over. I want you to feel the arches of the foot, the muscles in the arches of the feet really doing their thing. And if you need to hold on to something to make that happen, as I'm showing, feel free to do that. When you're ready, settle down, rise up, roll your shoulders, find Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down, bend your knees, walk it out. Find table pose. We're gonna reach that, um, place a block under the right hand and then reach the right leg back, draw the knee in, set the foot to the outside of the block. Rise on up. And then from this half kneeling position, wiggle heel toe your front foot all the way in front of the back. 
So working on front hip points up, tailbone down, length through the spine, toes are curled under. Roll the shoulders a little bit. If you can rock it, front tiptoes, arms out to the side for balance as needed. Nice, everybody. Feel free to have your front foot a little, right foot a little further to the right, yeah? And then go ahead and sink that front heel down. Take both knees down, cushion your knees as needed with your blanket, curl your toes under behind you. And we'll do a version of Malasana, but I'm gonna offer multiple um, ways to get into it and enjoy it. And Malasana, if you don't already know, is this deep squat. It's basically a butt to heels squat. So for some of us, our knees are gonna really stop us from that. And I recommend that you either, if your knees are gonna stop you, tuck your blanket behind your knees and put the block behind you, or just get some kind of low stool, stack of pillows, you know, ottoman, whatever you need to behind you. So here's what that would look like. You're kind of on the block, you've separated your, um, your knees from your thighs, your calves from your thighs a little bit. This is supposed to be a wedge to higher up behind the knees. Do what you need to do to get cozy here. Here's another variation, a little bit more appropriate. And if you don't need these things, then don't use them. You can be, by the way, even sitting in a chair. I would prefer a low chair, but you could even be sitting in a chair just to do this, right? So if you don't need the block underneath your hips, great, sit down into your deep squat. And if you need a little bit of support here, but not a huge amount, you can just use the blanket under your heels. If you still feel that this is at the edge of what's comfortable for you, like it's kind of a stretch, then I, you are still going to get a lot of benefit from this alone. Okay. So if you use whatever you need, and for someone like me who can sit pretty easily in this position, I, in particular, need to focus on lifting the arch of both feet, rooting at the base of the big toe, and spreading the toes. So making sure that I have good foot mobility. While we're holding this shape, um, and the shape, holding the shape, shaping the hold, <laughs> is therapeutic in and of itself, and it's literally what humans are designed to do multiple times a day. Um, whether we do them in the modern world or not is a big question, but holding the shape is, is really uh, very therapeutic. While we're holding the shape, I will say that the vast majority, 99% of the shoes out there, particularly shoes that are not labeled barefoot, that are not labeled minimalist, they are cramping our toes. They are too small for our toes at the front of the shoe. It can make you, in a certain way, a little bit of a faster runner, and it can stabilize your foot, but it is not a healthy thing. So try to wear shoes that let your toes wiggle freely, especially your pinky toe, especially your big toe. From here, root your hands. And I know for some of you that was um, uncomfortable to hold it for a long time. I appreciate you. Um, being willing to hold it as long as you just did. Rise into downward facing dog. Shake anything out here. And then settle your knees to the ground. So we're gonna do one more thing you're gonna, um, that will be kind of massaging of the legs. You're gonna drive your knuckle down the middle of the calf with the fist knuckles sort of in line with the length of the calf. And if you need a little support under the ankle, you can do that so that you don't get into an extreme pointed position with your foot. And that is the blanket roll under the ankle. 
We'll take it to the other side. Sorry to rush you. Feel free to spend a little more time on whatever side feels good. But we're in this sort of table um, rocking position with one hand on the ground and one hand, just the fist massaging the length of the, the calf muscles. You guys wanted a foot practice, an ankle practice, and so we're getting to all of it. And then finally, for those of you who have some knee stuff, you might take your thumb or your knuckles if that works for you, like really right behind the knee and see if there are any areas that feel tender in the way that they might be a tight muscle. There is a lot of tender tissue behind the knee, nerves, blood vessels, etc. You don't need to jam on those, but um, you can palpate around, feel around to find out if there's any just muscle that feels like it could have more give to it but doesn't. And then, of course, notice and compare right versus left. And that will give you a good amount of information that you can deal with later. Cross at your shins. If this works for you, great. And if it doesn't, no shame. You're going to come up in whatever way feels good. Rise your way up to standing and take your feet nice and wide apart. Bend your right knee, drop down. Keep the entirety of your left foot really rooted to the ground, arch lifted. Rise to your neutral and same thing but other side. So bend into that left knee, keeping the arch of the right foot really lifted and just swish yourself a bit side to side. So ankle mobility, foot strengthening. Rising back to center, shift just your hips. No need to bend your knees here. And then finding neutral, heel toe your feet toward one another. Take a soft bend, both knees. Just like we did in our centering, try to bring ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Soft bend is sustained, tuck left foot behind like a little curtsy. Neutral, right foot behind, little curtsy. Neutral, left foot behind, little curtsy, maybe go deeper. Neutral, right foot behind, little curtsy, maybe go deeper. And last one, each side. Yay, okay, find your way to center. Inhale, arms out and up. Exhale, arms down, just let everything float down. Please bring your hands to your hips. Shift your weight onto your right leg, draw your left knee up as you come onto your left tip toes and choose your version of tree pose. You're gonna bring the foot optionally to the inner ankle. I call this one the kickstand because my toes are still on the ground. Optionally to the middle of the calf. And then of course, you have the option to bring the lifted foot to the inner thigh. There's a little bit of added stability that happens when your foot is at the inner thigh in particular because you can really squeeze the two legs towards one another to create more muscular stability and inside of tree pose feel free to hold on to a wall or side of a chair i want you to take a little bend and a little straighten little bend and little straighten experiment see how that feels in your body rise up release, and slowly lower down. Shake it out, roll over your toes, right side, left side. And we'll shift to the other side. So bring your weight into your left leg, come into your right tippy toes, bring your hands to your hips. You could also have your arms out to the side for added balance. Heel is gonna maybe sneak into the inner left ankle area. That's your kickstand, your calf, hold, 
your calf hug, or your inner thigh squeeze. So wherever you are, squeeze the legs in the direction of each other. Use your arms out to the side for a little bit of balance. Hold on to something as needed. Option to bend and straighten your standing leg. It, it almost goes without saying in tree pose, but your knee that is the bent knee, it does not point directly to the side. It's gonna be on a diagonal. It's just the shape of our bones, our hips. So don't try to force it otherwise. Rise up, settle down, and then shift it out a little side to side. Heel toe your feet, toes out, heels out, toes out, heels out. And then one more dynamic skandasana set. So as you reach over to your left, go ahead and really root down through the pinky toe of that right foot. Reach over to your right, root down through the pinky toe of the left, and then just go side to side. Shift your weight all the way over to your right leg now, and you're gonna really probably need to use your arms here for a little added support, but hold it, tuck your leg behind, find that curtsy action here. Bow down like you're in Bridgerton, open out and other side. Bend the knee, hold it, hold it, tuck your other foot behind, make this a deep, deep curtsy. So you're on the toes of your back foot, you're really working the balance muscles of the hip and the ankle of that front foot. And after you've bowed to the queen, open, shift, and take it over. Tradition is all <laughs> that that comes from. And last side. Good, right back to center. Wide stance, just shift your weight a little to the right, a little to the left. Maybe do some hip circles here. Let's go ahead and heel toe the feet back together. This action of going from standing down to the floor by kind of crossing the legs is a pretty big, big deal. And it requires a good amount of mobility and a good amount of control in the ankles and the feet, toes, ankles, knees, hips. If you don't have it today, like really no big deal. We're just, a lot of times it's just getting your body used to something. And just like you wouldn't expect to be a piano prodigy the day that a piano is set in front of you, um, we have to practice these things in our bodies. So I just say that so that you don't feel frustrated if this feels unavailable to you today. But I want you to try to either cross at your shins, lowering yourself down this way to the floor, or feet hip distance and lower yourself down through a squat and of course in that squat feel free to come into your tiptoes feel free to put your hands down first then lower down you've got lots of options and of course you could just do a one-legged squat one knee comes down to the floor and then once you are on the floor tuck one foot in maybe your left keep the right knee pointed to the sky Hold on to the base of that right toe. Open your knee out to the side. Give it a little wiggle, a little butterfly flap. And then lift onto the tiptoes. Sink to the heel, lift the front of the foot. And then keep the base of the toes down, the foot mostly down to the floor, spread those toes, fan them out, lower them down, use your hands to get a little bit more space and just hold it as we inhale fully, exhale fully. We'll switch sides. So the foot is 
left foot is on the floor. And we're gonna first rise to the tiptoe, sink to the heel, lifting the front of the foot. We'll get to the butterfly waves in just a moment. Lift all 10 toes, spread them wide. Use your hands if you need to. We'll come back to this action. Base of the toe is held down as needed. And just butterfly out the knee that is lifted. See if you can hold the toes spread wide and the base of the big toe down to the ground without using your hands. It's just a little double dog dare. And neutral knee, toes up, a little bit of air between the toes, wiggle them as needed. And then let's go ahead and take a seat with the soles of the feet together. This one usually requires a little bit more support, so I'm gonna show you my favorite way of doing it. I like to be propped up on the block. I actually like to use a blanket to support my knees, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, make the blanket kind of longer and support the knees this way. Just for you, <laughs> I'm gonna free up my feet. How am I gonna support the knees? Something like this. I'm gonna free up my feet so that um, you can see what I am doing here. So cobbler's pose, also known as seated baddha konasana. We'll take our knuckles and just lean into the arches here. Become like a cat for our last few moments before Shavasana or meditation. Lean to the right, lean to the left, elbows are straight, the arms are really not working. And if you wish, you can also go up the shin, up the inner shin, up the inner calf. Make sure you don't feel any pulling or abnormal sensation in the hips. You want them to be supported as much as needed here. So even if that means a lot of support, that's okay. If you would like, you can now take your thumbs and kind of slide the thumbs up the middle median arch towards the toes. Give a little bit of a massage right under the base of the toes and then pull on the toes, give it a little bit of a wiggle. You can pull on each toe individually. It takes a bit of coordination, but we've got this. And then brush off your legs, brush off your toes, Brush off your shoulders and your arms. For those who would like to lie down for Shavasana, I recommend you have a little support under your knees and possibly under your head. If when you lie on your back, your chin drifts pretty far from your neck, then you're gonna also want like a very small pillow under your head, maybe just a folded towel. Um, and a block is too much for under the head, by the way. And then the blanket roll would be under your thighs. So go ahead and position yourself in Shavasana. If that's comfortable, feel free to take a final knees to chest, happy baby or gentle twist to each side. And if like me in the middle of the day, you prefer to be seated upright, Usually, not always, but sometimes, most of the time, I prefer to be seated at the close of yoga practice. You can also stay upright, find a comfortable seated position, right even, right to left. Wherever you are, allow your eyelids to get heavy. Allow your breath to slow down. Make any final adjustments so that you are not distracted 
by any physical wiggles that need to happen. Invite length in the back of the neck. Depth in breath. Allow the tongue to float to the roof of the mouth. Lips together, teeth apart. And imagine in this moment, a gentle rubbing, smoothing out the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows, across your forehead. Imagine a caretaker taking care of you, cradling. Breath might slow down. Muscles continue to soften. Breath is easy. Gently allow your next inhale to be a little bit broader and bigger, and deeper than your last. Taking your time, send this energy to your fingers and to your toes. Wiggling, circling. You are in Shavasana. Over the next two to three breaths, gently draw your knees to your chest and rock and roll to whatever side you feel like. We all commit to keeping our eyes closed as we rise. Almost together over the heart. Fullness and breath. Fully, fully present. Thank you so very much for being here.